A brother in Kentucky came to me after church one night and uh, over on Central City. And he said, Balance, he said, I'm going to bring you something tomorrow night. He said, uh, uh, it's about an automobile that we've got. And I said, okay. And next night he come after service, he had a brown paper bag. And he opened the brown paper bag. He said, let me give you a testimony. And he pulled out a distributor cap that had a hole in it almost the size of a quarter. He said, this car, we couldn't afford another car. We couldn't afford even to get the thing fixed. I'm going to truth about it. A while back, it quit running. It would not start. You couldn't get it to start. We took a prayer cloth and we prayed over it. We put it in the glove compartment and shut the, 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 the door of the glove compartment up. And we went back and tried it again and it fired. And it ran like a new Singer sewing machine. My brother-in-law, who is a sinner, back when it wouldn't start, we called him and he said, I am so far behind, I think I'm ahead. But he said, I'll tell you what, as soon as I can look at it, I'll look at it. Okay? It was running great. But he called them then after that. And they said, well, it's running already. He said, yeah, but I still want to look at it. You see, they don't sound like something was right. <laughs> and when he went and looked at it, him being a mechanic, he said, ain't no way that car would run. The distributor, he, had, he kept the distributor cap until you had had a hole. I've seen him with a pinhole like you couldn't even see in the old distributor caps, and the stinking thing wouldn't fire and wouldn't run. You couldn't even hardly see it. Think about one the size of a quarter. I said, I believe it. You don't have to show me the distributor cap. I've seen God heal engines. I've seen Him heal animals. I've seen Him do about it, everything and anything. Now, I guess anything I can believe Him for. Amen. I'm not doubting what, what, what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Some well, God don't move like... You know why most of us don't have anything from God anymore? Well, God, He don't move like that anymore. Oh, that's crazy. Pray for a cow. Oh, man. Do whatever you want. I just got to believe again in Mark 9, 23. Right. But I'm talking about healing of humans here, not so much animals, and I've seen God heal them. Okay? Because if thou canst believe, how many things are possible? All things. All things. Let me say with my text. Point of contact to faith. In Mark 6, we see here 12, 13. I used to think that James 5 was the only place, you know, the only place you could use oil was uh, uh, like in the church for the saints. Let them, let them call for the elders and all that, anoint them with oil. But then I found this scripture later, and they went out and preached that men should repent. Who was they preaching to? Wasn't saints, sinners. And they cast out many devils. And anoint, anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. They took the oil with them. <laughs> they laid it on sinners' heads or whatever. Yes, Hallelujah. You know why? Point of contact to faith. I'm telling you what, we were in the Philippine Islands preaching on the island of Mindanao. Donald Ray was with me, 12 years old. And of course at that age he didn't know sick him from straight up. He didn't know what was going on, hardly. You know how kids are sometimes. And uh, of course he enjoyed being over there, you know, with all the jungles and the monkeys and the animals and Everything that a kid likes. But uh, he witnessed this. And the NPA, I mentioned the other night, witnessed what I'm fixing to tell you because there are NPA officials there, New People's Army, Communist Insurgency in the Philippines. They were in there. They come to every, almost every meeting we ever had because they want to see what we were doing. I never preached on healing, Brother Couch. I don't even think I mentioned healing, folks, to be frank with you. I was preaching on the coming of the Lord. It was an outside meeting. We was, we was on a, a stand... Uh, if you want to call it that, and had a little roof over it. But, but out of that, there was a whole village. The whole village came in. Oh, you get up in the mountains of Philippines, place like that, the whole village come out and just see what you look like and nothing else. They'll come out and see what's going on because they don't have nothing else to do, you know. They don't have, they don't have electricity, so they don't have televisions and, and all the modern technology and everything everybody else got in America for distraction. They don't have none of that. So, you know, if you go up in their way up in there and, and uh, you, you look a little different than they do anyhow, so they come out and see what in the world's going on. Well, let me tell you something. At the ending of that message, and I never asked for anybody to come yet. They started lining up. And I'm not talking about church people. I'm talking about sinners. They lined up. They were sick. And every one of them we prayed for was instantly healed. I do not know of one that was not. The first one there was deaf in one ear. Brother Killakill, some of the brethren, they took a pocket watch, a large one. You hear the tick, 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 you know. And prayed for him. Stopped up the other ear. And he said he was healed. So it stopped up the other ear and held the watch behind him and asked him if he could hear it. He said, in the Sabano language, yes, sir, I can hear it clear. The next one stepped up, deaf in both ears. God instantly opened both ears. The third one came up, a, a, a woman. I said, started to say sister. She wasn't a sister. She wasn't even in church that time. A woman that was dying of cancer. God instantly healed her. Yeah. And right down the line. Hallelujah. And you better believe one thing, folks. That place got stirred up. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And I said that. I said that to bring you back to this. Five o'clock, Brother Couch, the next morning, they was beating on the door. We were staying in a building, Brother Jason. You know, on our, we carried air mattresses with us in those days. And we were sleeping on the air mattresses upstairs on a hardwood floor. And uh, they was banging on that door. They woke me up. And, of course, Donald Ray, being a kid, he wasn't too happy about being woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so I finally got up, you know, and we sleep most of our clothes on, whatever, didn't have on a shirt or whatever, got it on, went to the door. And they said, the church is full of people. When they said people, folks, they told my sinners, they said, they want you all to come down there and pray for them. They want healed. I said, whoa. In America, they ought to see many sinners waking me up at 5 o'clock in the morning, Brother Couch. Amen. To have church service. Amen. Praise God. I tell you what, God is not, I tell you what, folks, it's not God's fault. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now what is said? The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, 1, Who hath believed our report? Well, sad to say in America, not very many anymore. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? James 1, 2 through 4, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Joy? Lord, what are you talking about? I'm going along, uh, you know, batting a hundred here, doing pretty good, and here comes this stinking temptation. Whoppo. And what did James say to do in the times of some temptations? Count it all joy. Why? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith. Now let me say this, folks. N not just healing, but many talking about healing tonight, but our faith will be tried. Mark it down. Our faith, it may be finances in some of our cases. It, it, it could be a lot of things. But believe me, the book's right. Our faith is going to be tried. Hallelujah. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her. You know what this word patient means? Endurance. Almost synonymous. Let endurance have her perfect work. Endurance? We don't endure that which is right or feels good. We endure that which don't feel good and is wrong. Hello? Praise God. You don't have to do anything if God just instantly miraculously heals you. All right? Let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, God is wanting to do a lot more for you and I than we probably, maybe, want Him to do for ourselves. Faith, the prayer of faith. Faith means loyalty, belief, reliance. How many practice this today? The prayer of faith shall save. Why didn't it say heal there? That's a good question. All right. Let me give you some examples. I'm going to wind this down to the downside. Let me give you just a couple examples or so in the Bible. Where they never got an instant miracle. Where Jesus did not heal them instantly, and right there, just instantly. One case, John 9, 1 through 7. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man, a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. You know, I heard one preacher preach one time, and he said, Bless God, here's two people that never sinned in the Bible. <laughs> they never committed any kind of a sin. I said, Well... If that means what he's saying, then we got a bad contradiction because the Bible said all have sinned. Yes, Hello? It wasn't saying that they had never committed a sin in their life. It, Jesus was saying, it's, this boy is not, this person not blind because of their sins, what he said. That's not the reason. Okay? What did he say? Jesus said, neither had this man sinned nor his parents. In other words, that's not the reason uh, for it. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the work of Him that sent me. What is day? The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When He had thus spoken, He spit on the ground and made clay of the spittle. Right here, you'd have done a loss, whoever it was. Blind or not, they'd have been stumbling out of there, crawling out of there if they'd had to. And they heard Him, poo, that was it. It would be over. And He made a clay of the clay. He made spittle, the spittle, made, made a ball, clay ball. And He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go. He did not say, Instantly be open. He could have. But he didn't. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Salome. 